Give, I love those words in verse number 12, the beginning, now therefore give me this mountain. Some 85 years old that you read there in verse number 10. Uh, Joshua, the book of Joshua is more than history, amen? I'm thankful that it's more than that it's more than history, than it's more than just a story, but it's an illustration of the victory that the New Testament Christian is supposed to have. The book of Joshua, entering into Canaan land, Gilgal, the first place of count that the Christians go. What a wonderful time, amen? What a glorious time. The Bible says that all of these things that happened to them in their day is what to us? Now, I've said this a bunch of times up here. It is examples unto us. Always remember, whenever you're reading the Old Testament, you're always trying to picture something that's relatable to the New Testament. They're all, you're always trying to see a type. Joshua, you can look up that Old Testament name, and that Old Testament name means Christ. Guess who Joshua is? He's a type of Christ. You see Caleb here in the text, and he's these are kind of our two. Uh, these are our two characters today, and uh, and one being Joshua, the type of Christ; the other one being Caleb, which represents you and me, and God desiring to enter us into our Canaan. Uh, I'm thankful that what what happens uh, what happens in the land of Canaan, and the land of Canaan is a representation of of the victory you can have as a Christian. Did you know today, my friend, that God wants you to live victorious? Did you know today that God doesn't want you to go around? And I know that this thing of thanks and this thing, listen, this thing of, of being up, it's sort of a fickle thing, isn't it? Life throws curveballs at times, doesn't it? Hard times come. But listen, my friend, what we see as things as face value and what God, what the devil means to get you down, God means to bring you more closer and understand the victorious life that He, my friend, through the Word of God, has promised you in this day and time. It's, it's not accident. It's not happenstance. Uh, listen, my friend, the Word of God in the Old Testament by the type of Canaan has promised victory in your life. You'll see this promised land illustration and, and what, is it, what does it mean for these people? It was, a, it was a release for them. They were in bondage for all of those years. And my friend, aren't you tired of being a slave to the old dirty devil himself? Every time he says jump, you say, how high, my friend? This in Canaan land means that sin no longer has a hope. Listen, my friend, it no longer has dominion in your life. You can have that through this type, Joshua. You can have it through Christ. God has meant it for you, my friend, to enter into this victorious land. It was a, it was a release for them. It was a rest for them. For Listen, you think about it. For days and days and days, what they do? They circled that desert. The Bible says that it was wandering days. They, one, they just around and around and around. Are you listening to me? They tirelessly, just their life, seem to keep going in circles. I hope some of this is touching down with you. Just around and around and around. But thank God, amen, that they finally come to the land. They got serious about the things of God. We're going to look a little bit at how, a little bit more at how they got there. But it was a, it was a time of rest for them. It was a time of refreshment. Don't you know they was hungry in that desert? Don't you know they had a desire for some things in that desert as far as their physical desires. But thank God that he had promised them Canaan, which was a land that was flowing with milk and honey. Amen. It's a tank. Yeah, it is. It, this, it, this place, it was, it was rest. It was, it was restoration. Uh, it was a release for them out of bondage. But thank God, you know, we don't just tell about it. But there was a day that it all come around and it was a reality in their life. <laughs> 
thank God that it no longer wasn't just a sermon that Joshua preached. It wasn't just something that Moses and Abraham, that Abraham told about, my friend. But finally, guess what? They crossed over the river. They found what God, they, listen, it wasn't just a storytelling anymore, but they was able to partake of the things that God had promised them. Oh, my friend, I tell you, what I desire, my desire for me and for you is today that it wouldn't be a sermon on the page, amen, that it wouldn't be something that you just told about. Young people, that it wouldn't be something that you just heard about from Sunday school teachers and mothers and fathers. Oh, but that we, my friend, would find victory in Christ in our lives. And that's how it's how it must take place. Victory. This victory must come through him. Just a couple of things I want to notice with you today. Number one, and we'll look at verse, we'll begin in verse number eight. I want you to see Caleb here, and he's our type. So the type for you, the type for me. Number one, I want you to see Caleb's character. Caleb's character. In verse number eight, the Bible says, Nevertheless, my brethren that went up with me made the heart of the people melt. But I, listen, listen to these next few words, but I wholly follow the Lord God. Verse number nine. And Moses swore on that day, saying, Surely the land whereon the feet of the trodden shall be thine inheritance and thy children's forever, because, listen, thou hast wholly followed the Lord my God. Look at, if you will, in verse number 14. Uh, Hebron. Therefore became the inheritance of Caleb, the, the son of, there's that name again, the Kenizzite, unto his day. Because, what does it say? Because that he wholly followed the Lord God. He wholly, I believe we started our, I, I believe we, we started our announcement time this morning with being 100% committed to God. There's something about a Christian, my friend. Listen, and you can't even really put your name. Listen, you can't even call yourself Christian unless you are 100% given to God. Uh, listen, this it's amazing here in the text. Three times in this chapter, God gave it to us to say that Caleb was wholly committed unto God. Holy committed unto God. Holy committed unto God. He was pure of heart. There wasn't nothing left in that old boy except for a heart that was 100% sold out for God above. Do you have that, my friend? Do you have that in your life? Oh, you say, well, Brother Matt, I'm just a layman. God don't really, you know, I, I really don't have to do that. Can I tell you, my friend, that you are 100% wrong? God, listen, my friend, can I tell you that you are a disgrace to the name Christian unless you 100% sold out to God. You're a disgrace to the name. Now you say, brother, man, where do you get off? You make it up doctrine this morning. No, what does it mean to be a Christian? It means to be Christ-like. What did he do? He did it all, my friend. Without holding anything back. He sold it all out. Listen, half-hearted will not do it, my friend. Halfway, half-hearted will be faint-hearted, my friend. Do you understand that? You will not have the strength. But if you 100%, if you sell out to God, oh, thank God that he does something special on the inside of a Christian who said, God, I'm going to live for you. I'm going to sell out for you. You want me to tell you what you're doing, my friend? You're moving past what humanity is capable of, and you get to experience the supernatural power of God in your life. Thank God for the people who will settle out. Can I tell you, half-hearted living for God, my friend, you'll never enter into your kingdom. You're never going to experience. You'll never get there. I want to tell you, it's something special that God, what is, I couldn't help but think about what the Apostle Paul said. And he said, this one thing I do, didn't he? <laughs> this one thing I do, forgetting, all, that was in our vacation Bible school, wrong with the saints. This one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, pressing forth to those things which are before. He said, I press toward the prize of the high mark of God in Christ Jesus one thing that he was committed to, I couldn't help but think about old Dwight L. Moody. 
a wonderful evangelist, powerful evangelist for yesteryears. And oh, Dwight L. Moody, he started out just as a shoe clerk. He was a nobody. He didn't make it through school. He didn't learn how to read. He didn't learn how to write. He was uneducated and he was a literate little boy is all he was. Oh, but thank God one day somebody showed up in that shoe store. Amen. <laughs> somebody told that little boy about church and about Jesus. And Dwight L. Moody went on to be a preacher. Then he went on to be an evangelist. But in the beginning of Moody's time as an evangelist, he wasn't very powerful. He didn't have, didn't seem to have the hand of God. He wasn't experiencing God like he had heard about in the old days. He knew what God could do, what God could do, but he knew he didn't have it. Do you hear me today? He knew what God was capable of. He knew what he'd done in people's lives, but he knew he didn't have it in his own. He went to England. Over in England, he experienced there, uh, it, it was a great revival evangelist there by the name of Henry Varley was there. Henry Varley at that meeting, as Moody said in, here's his words. He said, the world is yet to see what God can do in and through and with and for a man wholly committed to him. Let me read that one more time for you. The world is yet to see what God can do in and through and with and for a man that is wholly committed to God. Oh, Moody heard the message. It struck his heart. He said, huh, that's what I've been looking for right there. Here was Moody's words whenever he said that. Dwight L. Moody said, by the grace of God. <laughs> Woo! By the grace of God. He said, I will be that man. He said, I want to be wholly, completely, I'm giving you his exact words, dedicated to God. And God took this little old shoe clerk boy, this little old unlearned, illiterated, didn't know how to write, didn't know how to read, didn't know how to spell. His wife, his wife wrote out his sermons for him. Amen, baby. I need to get your help every now and then, all right? Hey, his wife wrote out his sermons for him. And what did God do? Was a man who didn't know nothing, but his heart was pure. He wanted God above everything else. What did he do? He took, he shook two continents for the grace for the glory of God. We'll never get there half-hearted. We got commitment. We got commitments to a lot of things. A lot of things in our life that we're committed to that we're sincere about. Young people, it's the same way in our lives, isn't it? Y'all smile. <laughs> Same way in our lives, we got a lot of things that we're committed to. But if we ever want to enter over into Canaan, it's got to be 100% for God. If you want to experience true victory, if you truly want to have joy in your life, unsustainable, unsurpassable grace, mercy, they found it all in Canaan. <laughs> It was out there just like you promised. But it's going to take some people that are 100% committed to God. <clears throat> I tell you, my friend, is that truly your ambition? Is it, is it truly, is, 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 is wanting God, is it, a, is, it a, is it your main purpose in life? I want to tell you, my friend, that God will be, he'll be satisfied with nothing less than that. He will be. Nothing less but 100% selling out to God. If you, if you haven't done that, why not? Why not? What's in our life today that holds us back from getting into Canaan? Because ultimately that's the result of it. We've got our little places here that we're happy with. We've got a life now that that's good enough. The way things are going now, and I tell you, my friend, Jesus Christ did not, he did not bathe his, he did not bathe this world in the blood of his son for a half-hearted Christian. He didn't do it. That wasn't the idea. Not giving everything to us, and us only giving back a portion to him. But truly, that's that's what we do majority of the time. I challenge you today 
to go on full commitment for Christ. To sell out to Him. To love Him above, above everything else. <clears throat> We're not our own and we belong to Christ. And I, I wonder what we could do. I, I think thinking about this text and thinking about what Caleb was doing. And I wondered what we could do as a congregation with a house full of Caleb. A church full of folks that had a heart for God and His plan above everything else. Above their own plan, above their own dreams, above their own desires. Above your own family. You said, Brother Matthew, calling me to leave my family out? No, I'm calling you to follow this promise and God will take care of His promises. You see Caleb's character that he that he loved God more than more than anything else. He he was pure at heart, but you also see Caleb's confidence in about three places too. Look, if you will, with me. Caleb's character. You think about this. Caleb's character leads to Caleb's confidence. Confidence, and and look at look if you will in uh, verse number six. And I believe it's around the last part. It says, Thou knowest the thing that the Lord said unto Moses. Look at verse number 10. It says, And now behold, the Lord hath kept me alive, and he said these forty and five years ever since, what does it say? The Lord spake this word unto Moses. And look, if you will, in verse number 12. It says, Now therefore give me this mountain, wherefore the Lord spake in that day. And then again, look in the last part of verse number 12. Uh, he says, I shall be able to drive them out as the Lord said. So you see Caleb's character, but now we're seeing Caleb's confidence. Was he confident in Caleb? No, he wasn't confident in Caleb. He was, he, was, he was confident, and listen, my friend, don't ever believe that confidence in yourself is going to give you the mountain. The only way you can have the mountain is if God says, go and take the mountain. And guess what God had said to Moses some 40 years before this? He said, Moses, I'm going to give you, I'm going to give the children of Israel, they're going to have that mountain. You will enter into Canaan. My friend, you can rest confidently that whenever God speaks unto you, He's placed you, He's put this idea, this type of Canaan is to be in your life as a victorious Christian. You can rest confident in the Word of God if you follow Him purely, wholeheartedly, that He will take you through. You know what we do as Christians? We we believe we we know what the word says, and we know that uh, we know that God we know that it says that God's going to give it to us. That God says that He says that we can have the word. He says we can have this mountain, this place, and and, and He and He's and He's promised it. He's promised it to us, but we're not living wholeheartedly. Caleb's confidence come from Caleb's character. You're going to see it. I'm going to show it to you. His confidence come from his character. His character was a pure heart. Guess what a pure heart is? It's a perfect place for the seed of the Word of God to take root. <laughs> what a, a pure heart. And Caleb didn't have room for anything else in his life. And because of his character as a man of God, God was able to take his word, my friend, because who is God? God is his word, isn't he? Listen, that's what he's all about. He's about this book. And if you'll be sold out 100%, listen, my friend, this word will take root in your heart and you will be able to live in confidence by what God says. But, you know, if you're not sold out for God, if you're not 100% for Him, you're going to have a hard time. I mean hard, like a hard soul. A hard time on this Word taking root. If we're living for everything else.
Caleb had confidence over and over again here in the text four different times you see where he said and the Lord said his confidence was in the word of God God gave Caleb a mountain and Caleb went up that mountain with a sword in his hand with the word of God amen and guess what he had the title deed stuck in his back pocket amen he went up there because he knew the promise that God had given to him because God had already given it to him promised him he called Confidently, ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you, my friend, that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Listen, the only way, listen, we don't have confidence by what we say. Listen, and we train our children this way too. We do. And, and it's been passed down from generation to generation around here. And, and partly so, this is right. But our motive is really, I, I, we're a little off in it. And we always said whenever daddy comes up and he tells you to do something and it makes perfect sense, our children is a perfect example. <laughs> you know, it, don't, it doesn't make perfect, you know, it makes perfect sense and they want to say, well, why? And we say, if there's not, if, the, if what I've told them to do is the best reason to do it, the only other thing you can tell them is, because I said so. Because I said so. Well, why not we teach our children? Because it's the Word of God. It's what God has said. Caleb's whole walk through life was revolved around that book. And no doubt the Word of God does say to honor your father and mother. But unless you teach them that, they don't understand it. If we go around, no doubt your, your, your idea, our, my idea is right, okay? It's right, but why not we go around and say, because this is what the Bible says. We love God. He loves us. He gives His life for us. We're, we're going to live for Him wholeheartedly, and we're going to allow His Word to take seed in our heart that we may confidently walk through this life, stand on the promises of God, see the victory in the Canaan that God has promised for you. That's the, way, that's the way Caleb described it. That's the way that it went. His confidence, his confidence was in the Lord. The Bible says the Lord has said so that we may boldly be able to say. Uh, we must be saturated in, in, that, in, that good, in that good word. I tell you, you know what made Caleb the man he was? And as we, as, as we said, he, be, he believed the word of God. And a pure heart is a fertile soil. Pure heart is a fertile soul to be able to take the Word of God. And, and, and I begin to think in just some of the notes that I wrote down, and we're fixing to, we're fixing to close out of this. And, and, and I, I begin to think, how can a, a person, uh, how can a person be able to even sit in a congregation, hear the Word of God preach and just let it roll off your back? And, and it's because we're not wholly committed unto God. I mean, it's just plain and simple. We're not, we're not. And I, I know you come in, and some of you've worked all night, and you're tired, and you're hard, and you're stuck. It's difficult to be able to do, but we, we, come, we come in, and, and the reason, and, and thinking about not being able, what is it that, you know, we need the Word of God to be able to take root, but it's, it's, it's not of, it's not of, you know, it's not of great interest to us. And my friend, if we was wholly sold out to the Word of God, if, if, we, were, if we were truly 100% given over to God, if, and, and to come in and to be able to hear the Word of God, we, we would be soaking up everything that was being said. We just, we would take it all in. But what do we do? We're thinking, we're thinking of uh, what may be ready for dinner this afternoon. We're thinking about, uh, you know, tomorrow's Monday morning. I got a good route that I can make a little extra money if I do this over here and I get this business deal going like this. And, and all of this stuff is going through our mind. Uh, all, all of these things. And, and we're, we're thinking about, hey, uh, preseason football, this, you know, NFL's already done played a couple of games. We've already had some preseason. I, I wonder, you know, I wonder who's ranked in the top 25 starting the year this year. All of these things that are that are in our mind and, and, and what's going on, we're not we're not really hungry for the word of God. Why? Because we're not really committed to God. We're not really sold out. 
We're not, we're not, we're not the Christians. We are not the type, my friend. We would not be in this story as Caleb in the Old Testament. It wouldn't be us. We've got other things that are our concern. But thank God that here's Caleb. He's 100% wholly sold out for God. And what happens? He finds Canaan. You can have Canaan in this life. You can have victory in this life. He doesn't give us the spirit of fear, but of power and love and of a sound mind. That's what comes from the Spirit of God. I'll ask our instrumentalist to come back. As I begin to think, I'll tell you what, you can stand where you are. I begin to think about people in the Bible sold out to God, totally given to God. I thought about Moses. As God had, had, they had entered into the land that God had promised them. And Moses comes out from Mount Sinai. He's got the Ten Commandments in his hand. God had promised to see him through. The angel of the Lord come to Moses. And he said, Moses, I'm going to see you through. He said, I'm going to wipe out all of the enemies that are against you. And I'm going to give the land that's promised to you. I'm going to give you the land. God's promised you a land. It's just a type, okay? It's just a type, and that type is an illustration of the victory that you can have in Christ. He said, I'm going to give you the land, Moses. He said, Moses, I'm not going with you. A stiff-necked people. I, I'm not going through with you. What did those people do? He said, because Moses, he said, Moses, I've seen you worship that golden calf. I've seen you do things your way. I've seen you take the things in this life that you thought were important and put them above me. And Moses, because of that, I'm not going with you. What did Moses do? What did the, what did the children of Israel at that time do? The Bible says whenever Moses come to the people, and told them what God had said on the mountain. It says that they grieved within their faith. What happened? A time of mourning. A time of repentance took place. They said, God, if you're not going. What did, what did they say? We're not going. God, if it's not going to be about you. And it's not going to be all about you. God, I don't want anything to do with it. God, because I know you're the greatest thing in life. And I want you to be the most important to me. And what did God do? He gave them the land. He dwelt with them. What page are we seeing? Page number 177. What's the thing in your life today? What's the thing that's in your life today that's holding you back from seeing Cain? What is it that you placed above God? Anything you love more, desire more, cherish more than God, my friend, you placed it above. It's a God in your life. You're looking for victory. You want to be able to claim that mountain. God wants you to have it. He's already in His sovereignty, my friend. He's given it to you. He's placed it over you. It's, it's hovering around there. And he's waiting on your heart. To be all about Him. Would you change that today? Would you find victory this morning? These altars are open as we sing. You come today. He wants you to have the mountain. He wants you to have the victory. But he needs somebody that's sold out for him. He needs somebody that's willing to say, okay, God, here I am. Here's my family. Here's my finances. Here's my dreams. 
here's my job. Lord, here I am. God, would you take all that I am? Lord, so I can see who you are. I guarantee you, my friend, you'll get more than you bargain for. You'll get more than you can ever dream of. There won't be an ounce of regret. Will there be time of trouble? Sure, there will be time of trouble. But right in the middle of that, with your focus and confidence on God, He'll walk you through whatever you're dealing with. Come in to Him today. your heart at this morning? Are you committed to it today? Or truly is the only thing that you can be concerned about this coming week is what's going on at work? Is that what your concern at is this week? If it is, you're not committed to God. You're worried about an event that's coming up in your family. And really, that's all you can think about. My friend, you're not committed to God. You're worried about how hard your schedule's going to be this week. How difficult it is. That's all you can think about. You're not committed to Him. My friend, a matter of fact, you're living in defeat. You're living in, in, in where, the, where the devil's offered you and he's played you a hand. And listen, my friend, you've sold it for him. You're living it for him, my friend. But I want to tell you, if you just focus on God, change some things in your life. Be disciplined. Look, where you got, where you are right now with how life is, it didn't happen overnight. It didn't happen in one day. It's a cultivation of how you've changed things and new things and how you've lived. Why don't you start today, my friend? Set a new structure. Set some new rules. Say, hey, this time's going to be for God. I'm going to make sure through the day that I give some time to thought about this Bible verse today. I want to be in prayer. I want God to do some things in church. I want to give myself wholly to God. Watch what God will do. <laughs> Watch how God will move. 